terminal side of the angle to find the exact value of the six trig functions. Okay, so kind of changing the, the way the question is phrased, um, instead of giving us one of the ratios, they're giving us a point. Okay, they are giving us an x and y coordinate right here. So I think it's most helpful to draw a picture. Okay, we need to draw a picture. So if x is positive 16 and y is negative 12, what quadrant are we in? The fourth quadrant. Positive x, negative y is in the fourth quadrant. Now, when you draw this, your angle must always be with the closest horizontal axis. Okay, it's either made with the positive x-axis or it's made with the negative x-axis. But theta must always be made with the x-axis. Your right angle is also on the x-axis because we can now label our picture. Um, the x-coordinate is 16. The y-coordinate is negative 12. So this time the Pythagorean theorem is a little bit easier to deal with because we're not having to subtract. This time we have the two legs. We just need to find the hypotenuse. Now, I caution you. You must have that negative 12 in there. Um, but when you do the Pythagorean theorem, any time, this applies any time, you square a negative number, you must put parentheses around it before you square it. Okay? Because if you don't, what the calculator is reading it as is it does exponents first. So it'll square the 12. And then that negative, the way that your calculator computes a negative is it's negative 1 times the number. So it'll square the 12, but then it multiplies it by negative 1. That's not what we want to do. We want to square negative 12. We want to multiply negative 12 by itself to get positive 144. So either you just leave the negative off, or if you got to put it in there, put parentheses around it first, or it will mess up your answer. Okay, so that's equal to 400. So the square root of 400 is 20. So our hypotenuse here is 20. The hypotenuse will always be positive, okay? The hypotenuse will always be positive. The x or y or the opposite and adjacent, they can be negative sometimes depending on what quadrant we're in, but your hypotenuse is always going to be positive. All right, so let's go through our trig functions here. Sine of theta, in this case, negative 12 is the opposite, 16 is the adjacent, and 20 is the hypotenuse. Um, if you tend to get those mixed up, I suggest labeling them on your picture, okay? The opposite is the side that the angle does not touch. The adjacent helps form the angle, okay? Notice the opposite has nothing to do with the angle there. So the sign here is the opposite, negative 12 over the hypotenuse 20. Again, don't worry about reducing it, just leave it. The cosine is the adjacent, 16 over the hypotenuse 20. And tangent is the opposite, negative 12 over the adjacent 16. Now, the only time I would simplify something here is if we had a negative over a negative. Okay, if you have a negative over a negative, then yes, you should simplify that to become a positive number. Uh, let's do the reciprocal. Cosecant of theta, you flip it over, um, but we don't leave negatives in the bottom of fractions. So just leave that negative on the top even though it was originally attached to the 12, okay, we don't leave negatives in the denominator, so just leave it in the numerator and flip the numbers over. It doesn't matter whether it's negative 20 divided by positive 12 or positive 20 divided by negative 12. The result is still the same thing, but mathematically, we always leave the negative on the top. Secant, flip it over, 20 over 16. Cotangent, 
flip it over, again, leave the negative in the numerator. So negative 16 over 12. All right, let's look at B. Negative X, positive Y, second quadrant. Okay, second quadrant. So getting a little different perspective here, the theta is always formed with the x-axis. In this case, it's the negative x-axis. The right angle is always on the x-axis, whichever one it is. This time it's the negative. The x is negative, the y is positive, which it should agree with our picture. You know that over there x's are negative, y's are positive. We need to solve the hypotenuse, so we've got uh, 9 plus 25 is 34. 34 is not a perfect square, so our hypotenuse is just the square root of 34. So in this case, the negative 5 is the adjacent side. The 3 is the opposite, and the square root of 34 is our hypotenuse. So sine of theta is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. If you want that in rational form, 3 times the square root of 34 over 34. Mm-hmm, I will. I'm fine with either one. Cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, so negative 5 over the square root of 34, which would be negative 5 square roots of 34 over 34 if you rationalize. And tangent, opposite, 3, adjacent, negative 5. I'm going to slide that negative up into the numerator, so it is negative 3 fifths. You could also put it in front of the entire fraction. Um, just if you do that, make sure there's a break between your negative and your fraction line. Reciprocals, cosecant, square root of 34 over 3. Secant, negative square root of 34 over 5. Cotangent, negative 5 over 3.